What's up guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we recently upgraded our inverter from a standard 2000 watt modified sine wave inverter to a 2000 watt Renogy pure sine wave inverter. Uh, we did that for a couple of reasons. We wanted to be able to run more things uh, on our inverter inside the fifth wheel. Uh, the modified sine wave inverter did a great job at running just some very simple things, uh, but it wasn't real great for charging laptops and charging devices and really doing everything that we wanted to do. So what I'm going to show you guys today is how we run our entire trailer, uh, our whole fifth wheel, off of our Renogy 2000 watt inverter. everything that we would normally run except for our really high load appliances like the air conditioners and uh, the microwave that will run the microwave but puts it, it's a very very big draw so we don't run the microwave on it uh, but we can have all of our outlets will work um, you know everything that normally would work inside the fifth wheel we can run it off of our inverter and uh, there's a real simple way you can hook it up and uh, it'll work it'll work really really good all right, so we've shown you our battery setup before. Uh, we've got two Group 31 AGM batteries. They're 105 amp hours a piece, so we have 210 amp hours worth of batteries. Here's how we're able to run our entire fifth wheel. So what, this cord you see here, I've got it plugged into the inverter. Uh, this is a 50 foot, 12 gauge, heavy duty extension cord. It's a 20 amp extension cord. So we plug into the inverter, we run it down, we run it out the bottom. Uh, there's a hole in the bottom of the stock battery box for ventilation, so run the cord out there, and then we take it around to the back. So all you need is a 50 amp to 15 amp adapter to go right into your fifth wheel. I've got the cord plugged in. I've got it taped up so there's no chance of it uh, pulling loose or coming loose. So I wanted to stay nice and tight, so I taped it up. Um, but that's all you got to do. I mean, by doing this, we're able like I said, to run everything inside the fifth wheel except for our high load, um, real high load appliances. But it's very, very nice being able to just um, plug our chargers in or plug things into the outlets and all the outlets will work. Um, you do have to be mindful, be aware of what's on. You can't just leave everything on. But uh, the way we kind of keep track of the load and how much battery we're using, um, we use our battery monitor that I have mounted inside and uh, I'm going to show you that setup. So when we're on the inverter uh, right now we've got some lights on inside the fifth wheel uh, we have our ceiling our max air fan running to pull in some fresh air uh, and we've got our 200 watt Renogy portable solar panel set up so in a bright on a nice bright sunny day like we have today I'll show you what we're pulling. So this is where I had our old inverter on off switch mounted. Um, so I have it, the new Renogy one mounted here. And you can see that even with our lights on and the fan running, uh, the refrigerator fans are running right now also, and we're still charging two and a half amps. So we actually have, the solar panels are actually putting a surplus of amperage into those batteries right now. So even though uh, we have some things running, those solar panels offset it enough to still charge the batteries some while we're running everything during the day. Uh, works really, really good. The Renogy on off switch has your power uh, light, has a troubleshooting light right here. Uh, if this comes on, if the inverter gets overheated uh, or if there's an issue, this warning light will kick on. A um, couple things you need to be aware of if you're going to run your whole trailer on the inverter. Number one, you're gonna to wanna to come in and make sure that your converter or your battery charger um, is off. So I have everything right here. I can come in, uh, I can shut our converter off, and then I can turn the inverter on. Um, if you leave your converter on, then you're gonna drain your batteries very quickly because you're trying to, uh, the inverter, is putting power to your converter, your converter trying to charge the batteries, and you kind of start this uh, this spiral 
this downward spiral uh, and you'll eventually kill the batteries. But that's where this battery monitor comes in handy. Uh, immediately when I turn this inverter on, I know right away if I've got something running that shouldn't be running because I'll see a really, really high draw. Uh, if I forget to turn this that converter off, uh, we'll be pulling like 10 or 12 amps. So I'll know right away that something you know something's up there's something some high draw something high draw left on so this battery monitor has been uh, has been a lifesaver uh, it really lets you kind of keep an eye and, and monitor uh, what's going on with your batteries it's worked out really really great for us um, you can check the voltage that's the voltage going in right now you can see uh, how many amps going in uh, you can see how many amp hours we have in our batteries currently uh, it has a percentage so it's an awesome little battery monitor it's very inexpensive and uh, this thing is, is worth its weight in gold uh, they make some really nice expensive ones this one was not very expensive but it's been very very accurate and we've had great luck with it so that's how we run everything um, it's it's a very basic setup you know and that is not um, that is not to say that this is a replacement for you know a really nice solar setup with an inverter charger with transfer switches so you don't have to worry about shutting things off and, and monitoring everything but we found that this works really good for us we don't boondock a tremendous amount uh, so the investment in that type of setup really is not worth it for us at this point uh, will we get to that point one day we might uh, but for right now i mean we're going on day six um, boondocking out here with no hookups but you do have to be aware of what's turned on uh, make sure you don't have hydro appliances on. I turn the microwave off, uh, the breaker to the microwave, I turn it off just, just to make sure that out of habit um, we don't you know, hit those microwave lights to come on. Uh, those draw quite a bit. So being able to monitor what you got going on as far as your power draw uh, with that little battery monitor has been awesome. So we also have our generator set up back here. Pretty much we'll uh, run this generator if we have a cloudy day if we can't really get a good charge on the batteries um, a lot of times we'll fire this thing up we will run it for a couple of hours uh, maybe a couple hours in the morning uh, maybe a couple hours in the evening when we had our old inverter on there and couldn't really run anything um, inside there inside the fifth wheel uh, we were running our generator quite a bit having the generator for a backup has been awesome and being able to run our whole fifth wheel off of our, our battery bank uh, definitely has cut down on how much we're having to run the generator. So that's going to do it. I mean, that's a simple way to run your entire fifth wheel off of your inverter. Uh, again, you have to be aware of what's going on. Uh, you have to keep an eye on everything. You know, it's not just a uh, flip the switch on and forget about it, but for just a little bit of effort, you know, you can do it this way. And then if you decide at some point that you really like boondocking, you're going to do it more, then you can go ahead and make that investment and uh, go ahead and, and get a you know, nice, really nice solar setup. So if you guys have any questions about this, uh, about this setup, something I didn't cover or something you didn't quite understand, please feel free to ask uh, in the comments. We, you know, we answer all our questions anytime we get them. So if you have any questions, definitely reach out and uh, we'll be happy to help you. That's going to do it. We appreciate you guys watching. We'll catch you guys down the road.